Hello everyone. I just want to talk today, just briefly, about a figure line. A figure line that had a real chance at success. And many of you out there do believe that it is successful because you have so many of these figures in your possession. But the thing is, most of these figures have went to clearance. And it is because they are just not being bought by the mass amount of toy buying, the mass amount of the toy buying public. Now, I don't want to get into any name calling or anything like that. I just want to say as a Masters of the Universe fan, since I was a very, very small child, I... Uh, uh, I'm a 44-year-old guy, so uh, Masters of the Universe came along just at the right time for me. I had figures before there was even a cartoon, so this is a huge property for me. It, I'm a huge fan of it, and I was pretty excited when Origins got announced after, after you know, having all these vintage figures over the years, uh, sort of being disappointed with the 2002 line of figures even though I love the animated series and then moving on to the classics line of series which I thought was amazing and it actually got me into adult collecting however where the origin series falls flat and I'll talk about this why we keep finding these at clearance and and while why I believe they are heading to online only sales is because the lack of what Mattel, I think Mattel coined the term in the, in the first place years ago, toy etic. There's no toy etic anything with these figures. Now, if you take your hat off, your, your collecting hat off for a second of, I've got to have every one of these figures. This is my childhood. I want these. And you think about what was so cool about Masters of the Universe when it came out. I'm talking the vintage figures in the 80s. Not only did they look cool and were they so colorful, so you were instantly drawn to them. But one of the great things about Masters of the Universe was they always had a gimmick. Most of the figures had a gimmick. So Mantana, you know, not only could he do the body twist... But his eyes popped out, and they would say it. It wouldn't say on here, modern posing, retro play. No kid cares about that. No kid cares if they can pose a figure. What they care is what can the toy do. The toy does nothing. The toy poses and sits on a shelf. But this one, you can make its eyes pop up and down, which was really cool. Snout spout, you can fill him up with water, and the water will spray out of his trunk. It was so cool, right? I should have filled him up with water, but it didn't. Same with Cobra Con. He squirted a mist. Tongue Lasher. Still one of the all-time greats. What a great feature, right? Um, Thunder Punch He-Man. You popped in the... You popped in the ammo, and he... I mean, he had a thunder punch. He was awesome. And even like the Wave 1 figures that didn't have these gimmicks um, could, do the, could do the body twist, like the punch. And it made them interesting toys. So that meant, what that meant was if a, any random kid uh, of any age could go into the toy aisle and pick up a Masters of the Universe figure and go, ooh, I love these colors. He looks like a snake. And, oh, his tongue pops in and out? I want that. It didn't matter if he had 15 other Masters of the Universe figures at home. What mattered was that it was a colorful toy that did something. And those people in the 80s that made these figures at Mattel knew that. They knew that they needed a several-part system. They needed... A toy line that worked together, that had a story, that looked colorful on a shelf, and could do something. 
So fast forward to now, you have the toy that's colorful on a shelf that does nothing. And maybe, you know, oh, well, we can't make it do anything uh, because of the price point. If, if you can't make it do anything and you're putting it on retail shelves and you're trying to get everybody involved in it from the, the adults to the kids then maybe it just needs to be an online only thing or you're ruining the brand even further by every time somebody walks by it, they see it on clearance. That's ruining the brand. I, I'm sad. I was happy at first to see Masters of the Universe back in retail. It was awesome seeing He-Man and Skeletor for the first time in a long time being on the shelf uh, in something that wasn't Mega Constructs. But now I'm just like, man, this so ruins the brand that these figures are all the time on clearance. I mean, look at this. Should they be $17.99 retail? Hell no. They should not. But they trained us over how many ever years this was. Two, three years to just wait. If you wait, you don't have to pay $17.99 for it. You can pay five bucks, which is what? 1984 prices for He-Man? I don't know. I'm guessing. but And that's, that's to me, what a figure of this size that does nothing is worth. $5. I never had a sorceress, a vintage sorceress. So she's going to fit in. I have a classic sorceress. She's going to fit in. I said $5.39. I'll, I'll grab her. But I definitely was not going to grab her for $17.99. So... That's my spill on Masters. That's why I think Origins is going to online only. Uh, not only because they've ruined the brand to the general audience, uh, but because the general toy buying audience, which are children and people buying for children's birthday parties and Christmas and all that, weren't picking them up because they were like, what do these do? They don't do anything. There's nothing toyetic about it. There's no playable feature. And that's what people are looking for. And that's what they should have figured out how to do. Uh, whatever. I mean, it's cool that they come with a comic, right? That's cool. But, and that makes it seem classic. But really, it's not... It's not that important if the figures don't do anything... And the kids aren't interested. And the kids really needed to be interested this time around. I think it was probably the last chance. Cool art inside. Love Jitsu getting his day. Jitsu's in this wave also. Buzz off and mini comic stratos here. But, like I said, I wanted her to, because I never did have a vintage sorceress, so she can fit right in. But, as far as what's going on with the figures, I'm just, I don't, I won't be buying any online. I think I bought a Masters Verse Scareglow, and I tried to unsuccessfully buy the mini comic Triclops, and it didn't work out. But yeah, her wings can come up. She doesn't even have a any kind of spring-loaded waist. That could have been the least they could do with these figures. And it just wasn't, wasn't done. Or somebody decided early on that they weren't interested in kids buying these. Or I'm not sure. But uh, I tried to get a few for my daughter early on because I mean she liked to play with the vintage ones and and that's something else I can attest firsthand if I put like Cobra Con in her hand or Rat Lore or Manny Faces any of them that have a just any little action feature she'll sit and play with it for a while and she always would because of the action feature and she would you know she'd go Who, what's his name what's what's her name but the thing is, 
if if it's just a static figure, kids aren't attached to that like we were. We were trained kind of to be attached to that early on, but um, kids just aren't. Kids today aren't. So there's the sorceress, probably my last origin purchase of, I've probably only gotten 10 of them. And they were all mainly hole fillers and vintage. She looks nice. Uh, they, they're still making them where the, uh, you know, you could accidentally get the legs twisted around and never get them right again. And see, I still think she comes like that. It's just almost, you, you can get to a point where a figure is, has too much articulation. I think down here in the legs, origins are like that. But anyway, that's what I have to say about origins. Agree, disagree in the comments. Uh, but that's just a long time collector and a very long time fan having his say about the state of things and what Mattel's doing with the brand. And I hope you have a good day. Enjoy your toys, uh, especially your classic ones. Have a good day.